as we design new online and digital systems, an important question is what we should do with the work of our pre-digital predecessors. For example, Christopher Hatton's Book of Seals, uh, which is a work that many of you will be familiar with. It is a 128 folio vellum book compiled in about 1640. The volume contains information on 529 charters, of which some 240 are in facsimile. And I have an example there for you on the, the title slide. The book is sumptuous, but it also has proved to be a reference work with enduring value. For modern scholars, it has importance because it records charters and seals that in some cases have been lost or damaged. Older reference works can have value because they record seals that are now lost, but they can also be the best source of information that exists. So many seals survive in England that they have not all yet been recorded. Consequently, where resources do exist to catalog seals, those resources are generally devoted to cataloging unrecorded seals rather than in revising existing catalogs. Thus, older reference works can represent the main points of access to particular collections. Hatton's Book of Seals is one of the oldest reference works that modern scholars of English seals still regularly consult, but there are many more from the 18th, the 19th, and 20th centuries. Moreover, there are a multitude of card catalogs and hand lists that have never been published or worked up into proper formal catalogs and still only exist in paper forms. We need to sustain this legacy and set it alongside the new digital records that archivists and scholars are producing. In my presentation today, I will discuss the approach that I have taken in my own research project, which I call DigiSig, uh, to make these legacy sigillographic reference works searchable alongside their digital siblings. DigiSig is a work in progress. So I thought I would start with a quick history of the project just to make clear sort of what stage it is at. DigiSig actually originates in 2012. At that time, uh, the Seals in Wales project, to which I was a contributor, had recently come to a conclusion. And one of its legacies was a digital data set that included information about several thousand seals. In 2012, I was concerned about what was going to happen to that data set. So I started to work on creating an online system to enable public access to sigillographic data. I originally intended the system to hold the Seals in Wales data, but as my work progressed, I started to think in even broader terms. I wanted to ensure the seals and whales data remain publicly accessible, but as, scholar, but as a scholar myself, I needed a system that would enable me to search across all types of sigillographic reference works. I soon found myself designing a system to enable public access to all forms of sigillographic information from archives, museums, and private collections, as well as foreign digital resources, and legacy reference works. The first version of that system was launched in 2014. And this is the, the charming screenshot I took of it at the, on the very early days. Uh, it got a little bit better in 2016. I put some more images on the front page and some help text, that kind of thing. But it was still fundamentally the same system. And now I'm pleased to announce I have a new version up, which just launched today. So I hope it. I hope you will enjoy it. And for the remainder of my talk, I'm going to be discussing the features of this new revised DigiSig and what it can do. So one of the first challenges that confronts any digital project that wants to make use of information contained in non-digital sources is that those sources have to be converted into a format that a computer can understand. And this can be done in a number of different ways. DigiSig's design philosophy is to retain, insofar as possible, the integrity of the original. For example, Walter de Grey Birch's catalog of seals is a key component of DigiSig's data set. This late 19th and early 20th century work remains a main point of access to 
collections in the British Library. The work is available in a PDF, but not as structured data that can be searched effectively within a database. For DigiSig, I use the Transcribus text recognition platform to transform the PDF into a machine readable text. Then I use that data to create an image for each entry. Do I have a picture of that? Entry. And to identify the document reference. I then created a unique identifier for the entry, the seal, the manifestation, the seal impression, the matrix, the cast, the support, and the item to which it is associated. This is the basic pattern that all sources are fitted into when they are integrated into DigiSync. Now this skeleton is actually exposed within the DigiSync system. So let me show you how that works. So this is the form that you use right now to access seal descriptions. Uh, there is a set of filters over here, which I'll discuss in a moment. And these are your points of entry. You can click on these links to take you through to, in this case, we're gonna follow this link here to look at the seal description proper. And here you can see you're presented with effectively an image taken from the PDF of the digitized catalog itself. So what we're doing here is we're creating these entities. These entities have numbers. You can click on them to follow to the various components uh, within the system. And additionally, you can actually just put those into the search bar as well. You can write the www.digic.org slash entity with the number, and it will take you directly there if you like. So what you end up doing is you follow those links to various places. In this case, you are on this seal description page. This is the page for this entry within this particular catalog. If you were then to click on the link for the seal, you'd be taken to a slightly different page, which would give you information about the various impressions, matrices, casts in which that seal is represented. Uh, you can see here, there's a number over here, which would then take you to the record for the person associated with the seal. In this case, it's an unidentified person because I haven't filled the entry out, so don't try it. But in, in some day, there will be a nice link to a proper entry for whoever this person is, who was the user of the seal. So if we come back to our, our search form now, you can see that down the side, we have a set of filters. They enable you to direct your search to a particular collection, i.e. something like Birch's Catalog of Seals, uh, entry within that collection, if you know its reference number. And I'm currently pulling out of these descriptions, the motif descriptions, and then de the names of the people associated with those seals. So those indexes at the moment are reliable, but they're not complete. So you will not necessarily get a hit there if you try to find something. It may actually already be in the system, but I just haven't um, broken it down yet. So that is one whole facet of the system. But there's another one, which I want to discuss very briefly with you. There is another search page. And this one you get to by using the search but button here. And you'll see that it has down the side a completely different set of filters. And it's giving you access to records for the impressions, matrices, casts in the system, not the seal descriptions. So this search system enables users to, to filter a search by items of metadata that mainly relate to the manifestations of the seals as physical objects and as features of documents. When users perform searches on this page, they need to be aware that the filters use controlled vocabulary that is particular to the DigiC project. Now, the reason for this shift is because the metadata that catalogs employ varies in format. When we have stuff in the system from the 19th century and the mid 20th century and stuff that's contemporary, they're all using slightly different vocabularies. And if you just run searches on those terms within the system itself, you get unpredictable results. So a further layer of metadata is imposed in DigiSig. Uh, for example, we have uh, some catalogs use the term vesica for pointed oval seals. 
DigiSig rectifies that sort of discrepancy. Perhaps the most um, complex filter is the one for class, which is down there at the very bottom. Uh, the language that scholars have used to describe seals and their motifs varies from catalog to catalog. And so uh, DigiSig's approach is to insert a system of classification. This system of metadata is superimposed on top of these seal descriptions and is separated from it and is particular to DigiSig. Now, for most users, the value of a system such as DigiSig is that it enables searches of many different catalogs, but the data set has further potential applications. The linking together of so many catalogs creates the potential to create a single coherent data set that is far larger than anything that has previously existed for England. With the data, we can examine seal practices in greater detail at the local level and compare regions. We can also model the practices of the nation as a whole more reliably, since single collections tend to be focused on particular parts of the country. And here, this is a slide I, I put together some time ago, it's not completely up to date, but it gives you a sense of the geographic distribution of the seals that are represented digitally at this moment. And this opens up the possibility of answering existing questions that we have in sigillography, but also to address new ones. Here, for example, is a slide where I am showing you that it's possible to pull out lots of heraldic seals from different counties. And you can add in further nuances to that by adding in temporal data. And you can see the portion of people using heraldic seals climbing over time in these two distinct counties. And they're very closely aligned, which is not surprising because they're very close together. But perhaps we'll get different results if we start to look at other counties further afield from London and Sussex. Don't know yet. So if you visit DigiSig today, the index page will inform you that the data set currently includes some 42,000 seals, which are represented in some 58,000 seal impressions, matrices or casts, and they're described in some 44,000 uh, seal descriptions. These are large figures, but most of the information in DigiSig is available elsewhere. In a research library with a good set of reference books for sigillography, a researcher can find that information. The difference is that in DigiSig, that information has been translated into a machine readable data set. With the assistance of a computer, a researcher can run a search that might take several minutes to do by hand in seconds. However, that convenience comes at a certain cost. DigiSig maintains the seal descriptions, but to enable searches that cross catalogs, DigiSig imposes a data structure on the information that conceptualizes the seal as a multi-entity object with a seal description, a seal, an impression or matrix, a support, and an item, all conceptualized as separate entities. This allows for the linking of catalogs, both with other catalogs and with records for the charters and documents to which they are attached. Then DigiSig adds a superstructure of metadata to enable more predictable search results across catalogs with heterogeneous cataloging systems. This is one way we can ensure that the valuable information in our pre-digital sigillographic reference works could be integrated with our born digital catalogs. It would allow for more reliable searches and would create the possibility of using the entirety of the available information to address long-standing questions of English sigillography and to open up new questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>